Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian in Northern Virginia, where we're covering the Surface Navy Association's 30th Annual Conference and Trade Show. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS, and we're talking to Heather Willauer, who uh, we spoke to a couple of years ago, uh, who is in the Naval Research uh, Laboratory. You're one of the research chemists there in the Material uh, Sciences uh, Division, and you are working on the ambitious goal of turning seawater into fuel. Uh, it was very exciting when we talked a couple of years ago, and now it's, I think, a great time for an update because you guys have had some real breakthroughs. Talk to us a little bit about uh, you know, the progress you've made since you sort of first found that you could actually do this. Well, the, some of the progress that we've made, we've been very fortunate to be able to take, get out of the laboratory. So actually scale our stuff, our individual technologies up in, and into prototype systems and working with industry and actually moving the technology readiness level way up the scale. So we're very excited to, to start to build these prototypes and to, to be able to integrate them so that we can show the world that this is the type of stuff that we're doing. And, and so one of the questions was always, you know, how much seawater do you need to, the, and you know, how much seawater do you have to bring in in order to turn it into usable fuel? Talk to us a little bit about what the volumes and magnitudes and the contours and dimensions, because the whole idea of sort of this like self-sustaining power source is something that's very attractive, but the question is whether or not you're actually putting more energy into the process than you're ever going to get out of it. Right, now absolutely, it is an energy intensive process is because you have to split water at the same time that you're recovering the carbon from the seawater. And but it's a renewable resource because it's in constant equilibrium with air. So even though I'm having to move a lot of volume of water, it's a renewable carbon resource. And we're at sea, we're the Navy, and we want to make fuel when and where we need it, right? To help the warfare to, fighter to sustain uh, fighting and, and have energy to do our missions. So that's those are the things that we're looking at and trying to make these technologies, they're out there, right? And, and people know that we can do this, but how do you make a modular in nature for the Navy and to be able to scale them up and, and usable for the future Navy. And, and so as you envision this, you know, how far away are you from something that's that's usable and you can fit on a ship and would produce enough, that the ship would produce enough energy to not only propel itself, uh, power all of its sensors and weapon systems, but also have enough energy in order to be able to produce its own fuel? Well, now that's a, that's a difficult question, right? Because we're the research scientists, we're developing the prototype, so we're a, a lot further ahead than when we spoke to you three three to four years ago. And, and, and it's going to take more of that development and, and showing those individual technologies. What I will say is that they're modular in nature, so once we've demonstrated them at the prototype scale, and made them as most efficient as we possibly can, they will be easily scalable. That's the idea for, for the Navy in the future, if they choose to, to go this way. And what are the big challenges that you guys are focused on? You know, what are, what are you know, because every, every day in what you do, you're learning a lesson or you're learning a new problem or finding a new opportunity, as, as the case may be. Talk to us a little bit about what some of the big challenges and the hurdles are to um, you know, m making this something that's that's reliable, workable, and is is producing sort of the the amount of of, of energy ultimately that you need this to be a, you know a, a really usable system. I think one of the challenges is, is is getting that prototype. So now you're at a scale where you can start bringing in industry to help you make come come to fruition. So you're out of the bench scale, and you're not quite to a commercial scale, but you're you're sort of in that desert area, and, and we're there. And so and, and it's kind of exciting to get out of that to be able to show commercial industry and people that we have these technologies and they can help us integrate them now because they're big enough and get over those challenges. One of the challenges we have with the with the carbon capture system was it was the first that's ever been built. So it, we patented it at NRL, it was the first that it's been ever been built and just the challenges of designing that and for industry to build that for us. There were some challenges and hurdles we had to get around and then and now we have it and so we're ready to launch it in the April time frame and, and and study it. So now we'll be able to get enough carbon and hydrogen from, from seawater to make a gallon of fuel a day, more than enough feedstock. Um, and so talk to us a little bit about um, what that, I wanted you to talk about the prototype as a whole, but talk to us about the carbon capture system in particular, because you said it's never been done before. What does that entail? So it's an electrochemical process that gets the CO2 from the seawater and simultaneously produces hydrogen from the seawater. So what's fantastic about that is it's one technology. I'm not trying, you hear mostly people get CO2 from, from air, well, and then you still need a carbon source. Well, I get everything from seawater. So that helps with the Navy and, and the DOD because what we need is modular in nature. So now I have one technology that does two things. And we are at a scale now, this particular prototype will produce enough feedstock to make 
a gallon of fuel a day. And then what I envision, well, what we envision as a team is, is starting to, once we've got that module efficient, now that it's the first one that's ever been built, we go back and redesign it, you tweak it, you make it the best efficiency possible, and then what we envision is stacking these modules individually for as much fuel as we want to make. And uh, talk to us about what the size of that module is. So how large is this prototype module? Uh, that's difficult to share right now, particularly for the size. In, in aspect of... of is it, it, can you give any, is it the size of a toaster, a washing machine, or a house? No, it's it's not the size of a house. Probably the size of a washer, big, bigger than a washing machine. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's actually pretty impressive, actually, if you consider about it. That's that is actually pretty impressive. And if you look at an engineering space, for example, of a ship, you know, or on a ship, yeah. you could you could begin to inv although you need more than a gallon, <laughs> you know, a gallon at a time. But right. hey, you know, this is this is the the very first one. Um, well, Heather, thanks for it. So, where do you expect to be? So, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to talk a little bit more regularly, yeah. but where do you expect to be this time, say next year? And where do you expect to be, say, in five years? Well, we hope to have our carbon capture system demonstrated and then learn how to make it more efficient, right? Because it's the first that's ever been designed. And in three years, we hope to have an integrated system. So we have the carbon capture with the fuel synthesis process, and we can actually demonstrate it. That's what we want to do. That's uh, really... Up to five gallons a day. That's what up to five gallons a day we want to make. Well, Heather, thanks so very much for joining us, and best of luck, and, and looking forward to staying in touch. Appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you.